wanting to get along with people, and I grew up wanting to um, be friends with people, and bit by bit was forced into little boxes, and you don't fit here, and, you know, that's, that's, and, and, and I could see where a lot of people would take that kind of attitude from the, from the environment that surrounds them and take on that loner perception, and I did for a while. Mm -hmm. But I realized that beneath the surface of that was, I felt that way because there was a, a desire to, to link. And there was, it really was a desire to understand. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, it, it, in my mind it comes down to a great respect for, for life and people. And mm. I don't know, it, it's, it can get very metaphysical. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, it sounds like you could end up getting a lot of letters <laughs> yeah. from fans about this. Do, do you think you have a very, uh, like a... a, a, a um, what would the word be? Maybe you have like a, a stronger uh, following, a more committed following, I guess, would be the, the expression than other bands? Um, that's really hard to say because I don't follow any other bands close enough to mm. know. Mm. Um, but I do, I do in my heart feel that there's like a, there's a sense of identity to us because there's a part, there's a part of, of us that people recognize in, in terms of that we do great things and we make great music, but there's another part where people really recognize that we're really not that different from them. Mm -hmm. The distance between me and some 15-year-old kid that I meet is not that great. Mm -hmm. And there's something that bonds us to people and bonds them to us because, you know, we're not playing the rock star myth mm -hmm. game, you know, we're right. not swayed, we're not, you know, we're not trying to trump up and create a mythological image. I mean, we're really being ourselves. Mm -hmm. And there's something about that combination of great things and, and, and a certain humility that creates for something that's not... I mean, most people go the opposite way. Mm -hmm. They're trying to create an alter ego or alter image that is like an extension of what they want to be. Mm -hmm. And maybe there's some reality thrown in, but usually it's like a blown-up cartoon character. Right, or an exaggerated sense of theatrics or, or absolutely or, yeah so you think the average fan might just be rather inclined than to uh, to ask you for your autograph would just sort of come up and sort of uh, pat you on the shoulder and say bill good album you see you around dude <laughs> well it, it both i mean it both it happens both some people just want to come and shake your hand uh -huh. some people want to ask you you know silly questions about what kind of guitars you play uh -huh. And some people want autographs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Comes in all shapes and forms. But they're but they're continually amazed that that you'll actually talk to them like they're a human being. Mm -hmm. um, question here about the the, the, the titles of the songs. Um, they're all rather simply titled, as this guy knows, just like Hunter, yeah. Rocket, right. DNA, Silver Fox, etc. Um, is this um, uh, paradoxical? Um, that is, are these intentionally simple names? Uh, attached to the songs because the songs themselves are about complex things. Right. Yeah. That's that's a very good assessment. Oh, mm -hmm. Like he yeah. says, for example, in the same song, you'll have both. You'll have contra contrasting elements, sort of a dualism. You'll have brightness right. and darkness. You'll have this, this very static feeling and, and and dynamic feeling at once. That's true, and that's why I like the ambiguity of of having one word titles because it, you know it, it's like an umbrella. It mm. throws an umbrella over the song and then underneath that you know the lyrics are of the song mm -hmm. but a lot of people seem to i mean that seems to be a thing that people want the song summed up in the title mm -hmm. you know you know the, t the day you broke my heart and made me cry you know <laughs> and I, I i just i haven't been able to write those kind of titles yet <laughs> you can't come up with those great parenthetical things. no no <laughs> okay well good we finally got a question right here let's uh, now that we're in a roll let's go into question number nine um the uh, the lyrics uh, seem to be more concerned with um, the metaphorical uh, or uh, the idea of fantasy rather than reality. I do disagree. Okay, that's that's the first half of it. Um, <laughs> do you have it says do you are you inhibited about singing about your frustrations the, the frustrations that come from daily living? He seems to assume that since you don't think about the frustrations in daily life, you're more concerned with the, the, the fantasy side of life. Oh, I disagree. Okay, well, but uh, maybe maybe he's misunderstanding it to the point that like, if if I had to choose in what I would concern myself with, I would concern myself with probably a broader understanding of of the subject than like the, 
the most minute details. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, you can you can talk about like how you got in the fight with your girlfriend, but you can also talk about like why you're a fucked up person mm, and why you're bitter and 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 why you get in those kind of fights. Mm-hmm. So you and see. that's that's the difference. And so so I try to reach for a little more depth. But to me, to write about daily living is to be, to be mundane. But I would hardly call it fantasy. And there's nothing in there about dragons and elves. <laughs> so I, I don't know what he's talking about. Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe it's cause you you change your perspective, and that uh, sort of well, well, but that's that's me being uh, an objective, as objective as I can be, first person. Uh-huh. I mean, I'm singing about my life, but I'm I'm doing it as an objective a way to bring in all sides of the argument. Mm-hmm. Because to play the angry young man is to is to really limit yourself to a singular idea, which probably is not the right one. Hmm, hmm. M- most truths to me are a combination of elements; they're not one point of view. Hmm, hmm. And that obviously gets back to the the, the title there, the idea of uh, you know. And there you go. It, it does all kind of link in on a philosophical level. Mm-hmm. The, question ten here says uh, that there is a sort of a of a spiritual depth uh, to to each song. Um, that suggests the idea that um, there's there's pain and and and, and frustration in like reality. Mm-hmm. Is, is that the, the case for you? I mean, I, I that's a rather shallow way of looking at. It. Obviously, your your sense of reality is not not colored mm-hmm. exclusively by by pain and, and frustration. Right. But does that element come out in your music? Sure. Uh-huh. <laughs> I don't know how to answer that. Okay. I mean, you know. I don't know. I don't know what to say about it. Yeah, I think we're getting a little bit uh, vague here. But I think he's leading up to this next question, which asks, um, um, does uh, this idea of, of pain and suffering have anything to do with your actual experiences in life thus far? Well, I mean, I can I can answer both those questions by saying that there's, there's, not, there's nothing that I write about that isn't true, mm-hmm. and there's nothing I write about that hasn't really happened to me. Mm-hmm. So... Would it have the... Do, I would imagine that the, the the songs are inspired by any of a number of experiences, from you know mundane experience to to sort of uh, heavier stuff. Right. I mean, I mean to me that you know life life exists on an, an amazing number of levels. I mean, you you can exist on it as simple level as I get up, I go to work, you know, so I can pay my rent and I can eat, mm-hmm. or you can try and understand like why people create art. You know what? What is it about the human psyche that drives us to like under, try and understand why we even bother to mire in the mud, so to speak? Mm-hmm. And um, so, yeah, does that make any sense? Yeah, no, no that, that that does. I, I think I think you touch on a crucial point there because uh, artists often are co- constantly sort of uh, asking themselves and asking their fans through the music, "Why am I doing this?" Yeah, well, I mean, really, why? I mean, part part of the reason I do it is because I love. Art. I love to create mm-hmm. something that I would consider new. Mm-hmm. There's another part of me that likes the, the release of the aggression mm-hmm. and and the release of just whatever is inside me. Mm-hmm. Another part of me does it because I'm insecure and I and I need to be have approval from ten thousand people at a time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, you know? c- certainly with music you can achieve the, the 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 sense of sheer scale. And I think a lot of musicians do ask themselves the question: Why is it why is it music that, I, that I've chosen to uh, chosen as my medium? I, I I don't know. It doesn't. I, so I don't. Really, I'm not really hung up on that. You know, mm-hmm. if I was if it wasn't music, it would have been something else. Mm. But you know, I love music. I always have, and it's what I do. Mm-hmm. But um, I don't know. Is uh, the song "Geek U- Geek USA" ab- about um, despair? No, no. Okay, wrong. So it's it's about um, um, it's kind of about how the way America is is that you know um, if you basically are not. You know, you don't fall into you know two or three categories that there's something wrong with you. Mm-hmm. You know, our 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 school system, our system of value is not created around the brilliant and and the artistic. It's created around you know those who can take tests well. Mm, so, so it's about alienation. It's about it's a well. If you go even further, it's about having been through that process, wishing that you could go back. 
and them. Mm -hmm. The distance between me and some 15-year-old kid that I meet is not that great. Mm -hmm. And there's something that bonds us to people and bonds them to us because, you know, we're not playing the rock star myth Mm -hmm. game. You know, we're not swayed. We're not, you know, we're not trying to trump up and create a mythological image. I mean, we're really being ourselves. Mm -hmm. And there's something about that combination of great things and, and, and a certain humility that creates for something that's not... I mean, most people go the opposite way. Mm-hmm. They're trying to create an alter ego or alter image that is like an extension of what they want to be. Mm-hmm. And maybe there's some reality thrown in, but usually it's like a blown-up cartoon character. Right, or an exaggerated sense of theatrics. or, or Absolutely. Theater. Yeah, so you think the average fan might just be rather inclined then to uh, to ask you for your autograph would just sort of come up and sort of uh, pat you on the shoulder and say, Bill, good album. You'll see you around, dude. <laughs> like well, happens. it both. I mean, it, bo- it happens both. Some people just want to come and shake your hand. Uh-huh. Some people want to ask you, you know, silly questions about what kind of guitars you play. Uh-huh. And some people want autographs. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It comes in all shapes and forms. But they're, but they're continually amazed that, that you'll actually talk to them like they're a human being. Mm-hmm. Um, question here about the 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 titles of the songs um they're all rather simply titled wanting to get along with people and i grew up wanting to um be friends with people and bit by bit was forced into little boxes and you don't fit here and you know that's that's and 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 i could see where a lot of people would take that kind of attitude from the from the environment that surrounds them and take on that loner perception and i did for a while Mm -hmm. But I realized that beneath the surface of that was, I felt that way because there was a, a desire to, to link. and There really was a desire to understand. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't know, it, it, in my mind it comes down to a great respect for, for life and people. And mm. I don't know, it, it's, it can get very metaphysical. But Yeah, yeah. well, it sounds like you could end up getting a lot of letters from <laughs> yeah. fans about this. Do, do you think you have a very, uh, like a... a, a, a um, what would the word be? Maybe you have like a, a stronger uh, f- following, a more committed following, I guess, would be the, the expression than other bands? Um, that's really hard to say because I don't follow any other bands close enough to mm. know. Mm. Um, but I do, I do in my heart feel that there's like a, there's a sense of identity to us because there's a part, there's a part of, of us that people recognize in, in terms of that we do great things and we make great music, but there's another part where people really recognize that we're really not that different from my to disagree. Okay, so that's, that's the first half of it. Um, <laughs> do you have, it says, do you, are you inhibited about singing about your frustrations, the, the frustrations that come from daily living? You, you seem to assume that since you don't sing about the frustrations in daily life, you're more concerned with the, the, the fantasy side of life. Oh, I disagree. Okay, well, but maybe maybe he's misunderstanding it to the point that, like, if if I had to choose in what I would concern myself with, I would concern myself with probably a broader understanding of of the subject than like the, the most minute details. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, you can you can talk about like how you got in a fight with your girlfriend, but you can also talk about like why you're a fucked up person. Mm, and why you're bitter and 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 why you get in those kind of fights mm-hmm. so you, and that's that's the difference and so so I try to reach for a little more depth, but to me to write about daily living is to be to be mundane, but I would hardly call it fantasy, and there's nothing in there about dragons and elves <laughs> so I, I don't know what he's talking about yeah well maybe maybe it's cause you you change your perspective and that uh, sort of well but that's that's me being uh an objective, as objective as I can be a first person. Uh-huh. I mean, I'm singing about my life, but I'm, I'm doing it as an objective a way to bring in all sides of the argument. Mm-hmm. Because to play the angry young man is to, is to really... Cold, as this guy knows, just like a yeah. rocket, right. DNA, silver fuck, etc. Um, th- is this um, uh, paradoxical? Um, that is, are these intentionally simple names... Uh, attached to the songs because the songs themselves are about complex things. Right. Yeah. That's that's a very good assessment. Oh, mm-hmm. Like he says, yeah. for example, in the same song, you'll have both. You'll have contra- contrasting elements, sort of a dualism. You'll have brightness right. and darkness. You'll have 
very static feeling and, and, and dynamic feeling at once. That's true, and that's why I like the ambiguity of, of having one-word titles, because, it, you know, it, it's like an umbrella. It throws an umbrella over the song, and then underneath that, you know, the lyrics are of the song. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people seem to, I mean, that seems to be a thing that people want, the song summed up in the title, you mm -hmm. know. You know, the, t the day you broke my heart and made me cry, you know. <laughs> And I, 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 just, I haven't been able to write those kind of titles yet. <laughs> you can't come up with those great parenthetical things. No, like no. <laughs> okay. Well, good. We finally got a question right here. Let's uh, now that we're in a roll. Let's go into question number nine. Um, the uh, the lyrics uh, seem to be more concerned with um, the metaphorical uh, or the idea of fantasy rather than reality limit yourself to a singular idea which probably is not the right one mm -hmm. most truths to me are a combination of elements they're not one point of view mm -hmm. and that obviously gets back to the, the, the title there the idea of uh, you know, and there you go it, it does all kind of link in on a philosophical level mm -hmm. the, question 10 here says uh, that there is a sort of a, of a spiritual depth uh, to, to each song um, that suggests the idea that um, there's there's pain and, and 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 frustration in like reality. Mm -hmm. Is that the, the case for you? I mean, I, I that's a rather shallow way of looking at. It. Obviously, your your sense of reality is not not colored mm -hmm. exclusively by by pain and, and frustration. Right. But does that element come out in your music? Sure. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how else to answer that. Uh -huh. I mean, you know. I don't know. I don't know what else to say about it. Yeah, I think we're getting a little bit uh, vague here. But I think he's leading up to this next question, which asks, um, um, does uh, this idea of, of pain and suffering have anything to do with your actual experiences in life thus far? Well, I mean, I can I can answer both those questions by saying that there's, there's, not, there's nothing that I write about that isn't true, mm -hmm. and there's nothing I write about that hasn't really happened to me. Mm -hmm. So... Well, did, how